What's going on guys? Uh, back at you with another video. This video is going to be a little bit different. Uh, one, I just want to point out in case you haven't noticed already, the lighting in this video is weird. Uh, my lighting setup got kind of jacked and I haven't really figured out what's going on with it yet. So in case you're wondering, that is why. But uh, this video is going to be a little different in the aspect of normally I like to really use a knife you know before i put a review out on it or give you my thoughts on it uh generally minimum i will carry a knife for a month or so before i put a review or anything out on it this one's gonna be a little different in that i'm not doing that uh the knife this video is about i've only had it for about a week now i guess and i have carried it uh a good bit in that time and I have used it but I don't know why it was just something about this knife that was just kind of cool to me and I was just I was just kind of excited about it I don't know what it was it's it's not that that's it's that you know special of a knife it's just something cool about it uh first off show you the packaging as you can see there Ethan grow high quality knife uh <laughs> Their packaging lives a little bit to be desired, I will say that. It's just a cardboard box with this like fake suede coating on it. And there's your sticker. Yes, made in China. Uh, this isn't my first even this is the box that came in, in case you're wondering. Uh, they all every or I say every Every Ethan Gurr knife that I've ever gotten came in basically the same box, just in a different size. But, uh, here's the knife. Uh, this is the Ethan Grow EF906. And it is just a hoss of a knife. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what it is about this knife. It's just, it's a cool knife. Uh, it's a cool knife, and I think it's a really good value. Uh, we'll get into that and kind of my thoughts on Ethan Grow. Uh, this isn't the only Ethan Grow knife I have. I've actually got one other one, but this is the one that this video will be about. Man, the action on this knife is so good. Uh, <laughs> kind of skipping ahead. We'll get into that. Uh, like I said, this is the Ethan Grow EF. 906 it is a d2 uh, you can see some oil on it right there i actually just took this knife apart and cleaned it before this video i'm gonna try to get in the habit of doing that i've got some knife pivot lube seeping out anyway this is the even grow ef906 it is a d2 steel blade flipper Flipper, it also has thumb studs and you can use either one. The thumb studs work just fine. I just prefer the flipper. Uh, but it is a D2 blade and full titanium frame lock. And when I say full titanium, this is a slab of titanium. Uh, as many of you have probably noticed before, some of these Chinese knife companies will weir add weird color highlights to knives for sort of no reason uh this one's fine if you don't like that i may actually strip this color off of this backspacer later this is a single piece uh titanium backspacer as well and i may end up this is anodized i may end up stripping that off just down to bare titanium the backspacer is this type of light purple type color and the pocket clip i don't know how well it will show on camera but it is a very very light sort of uh it's it's a shade of green to my eyes it's really like a very light pastel green uh i actually don't mind it i kind of like the color of it but i don't like the clashing colors right here so i may strip that backspacer off and just go take it back to straight titanium but uh d2 blade full titanium frame lock and this is a beast of a knife uh if any of you have seen my review of the Cold Steel 4 Scout, that's the kind of vibe that I get from this knife. 
just a little bit fancier. Uh, this is a big knife. And I mean, it's a big knife. Uh, go over some of the specs real quick. And these specs that I'm going to give you were are actually from me. I measured this knife right before this video started to get my specs on it. I read the specs off of Amazon, which is where I ordered this knife from, because Ethan Grow doesn't really have a website. You know, so you kind of had to go off whoever the seller of the knife is, whatever specs they list. And some of the specs on Amazon just didn't seem like they would be right to me. So all the specs for this knife are measurements that I've taken myself. Uh, overall length on this knife from tip to butt is nine and one eighth inches. The blade length is four inches. The handle length is five and one eighth. Uh, per Amazon, the blade length they have it listed is like three and three quarter inches or something like that. It's not, it's longer than that. Uh, I'll throw a tape up here real quick to show you. If you can see right there, it's right at four inches as well as the handle, which is right at five and eighth. Uh, it's a big knife, uh, nine and eighth inches overall. Four inch blade, five and one eighth inch handle, and it weighs 9.38 ounces. Uh, so it's a chunky knife. But keep in mind, this is a big slab of D2, and then of course a full titanium frame lock handle, and a large one at that. So 9.38 ounces. It is a big knife. Most people wouldn't EDC this. I've been carrying it for the past week, and honestly, it actually carries pretty good. I mean, it's heavy, and there's nothing you can do about that. I mean, you know, you're either good with the weight or you're not. But as far as how it feels in the pocket, it actually doesn't feel that bad. Uh, this flipper tab sticks out a pretty good way. I haven't measured the height of that tab, but I'd say that's probably just a little bit over a quarter of an inch tall right here. So you do feel it in the pocket if you're sticking your hand in there with other stuff. But overall, in the, in the pocket, it actually feels pretty good. Uh, again, it's a D2 blade. It says it on the offside right there, D2. Uh, the only markings on this blade are on this knife entirely is where it says D2 right there. And then on the show side, obviously, you can see where it says EF. That is for Ethan Grow. And a word of caution, uh, I ordered this knife on Amazon. I do think there are other places you can get it from, but the picture of this knife on Amazon, if you just, if you find this knife, if you just search Ethan Grow EF906 on Amazon, the picture of this knife on the Amazon ad does not have this logo right here. It is just a bare blade on this side. And then there's some type of little engraved logo right here on the top corner of the handle. Uh, but on the, on the one they have listed on Amazon, this EF logo is not on there. Uh, I would have preferred it to be like that. Uh, I'm not crazy about that. It just kind of seems slapped on there. It doesn't really look, it looks out of place right there. And it's kind of reflective, so the light is showing it. It's just a black, it looks like a black sticker, basically. But looks a little out of place. I may see if I can get that off. I might not worry about it. But just in case you do order this knife, the picture on Amazon does not have that. But the knife I received, this one, did have that on there. So that's just a note to you. Uh, again, it's a flipper, also has thumb studs. It works just fine either way. Uh, no issues there. Titanium frame lock. Uh, it also has a milled titanium clip and you can see the pocket clip does have some texture right there. I really like how the pocket clip looks on this knife. It's actually a pretty nice clip. Uh, it's not a deep carry clip. Uh, you'll still have a little over, mm, probably about three eighths to half an inch of knife sticking up out of your pocket. If that's a big deal to you, I really don't care. Uh, <clears throat> and again, it's got a full or a partial titanium backspacer. It's got a lanyard hole for all you lanyard hole guys and for all you lanyard hole guys <laughs> I will just show you this the lanyard hole on this knife 
is a little over a quarter of an inch. It is just a hair over a quarter inch. So you can stick anything you want to through that lanyard hole. You could put you four lanyards in this knife. You could carry four lanyards and freaking 12 lanyard beads on this knife if you wanted to. Heck, it's already that heavy. Why not add some more? Uh, sorry, a little tangent about lanyards. Uh, again, titanium frame lock, D2, D2 blade. It does have a stainless steel lock bar insert up in there. If you can see that, it works just fine. Uh, the pivot on this knife, I don't know if you can see it. It does have a pass-through pivot. Uh, I actually really like that just because, again, I took this knife apart before the video to clean it. Uh, when I first got the knife, I didn't take it apart and oil it or anything. I just carried it straight out of the box as it came, which was okay. It had just a little bit of greediness to it, but not bad. Uh, but since I've carried it like that, and again, I cleaned it before this video, I took this knife apart and cleaned it out real good and put my knife pivot lube in there. This knife did come very well old. Uh, everything, the internals of the knife, the blade, everything was coated in oil, uh, so no rusting issues or anything. But I cleaned all that out, put my knife pivot lube in there. Uh, but if you can see, this knife does run on caged bearings. Uh, it's got two stainless steel washers and then two sets of caged bearings. And with this pass-through pivot, when you put it back together, uh, you just wrench this down. And it's got a slot on this side in case you need to grab it. But the adjustment's all on this side. Uh, that's how you actually loosen it right there. But I'm assuming that slot is just for in case this side tries to spin or something, you can stick something in there to hold it. I didn't have that problem. But with this type of pivot, you don't really have, it's, it's self-adjusting. Uh, if you can see the centering on this knife, that isn't me trying to center it. That is just me putting this knife back together and wrenching this pivot down all the way, and it just self-centers. Uh, it's self-centered, and it's self-adjusts. Uh, you can't over-tighten it because it's not a friction pivot. Like I said, it's on, it's on bearings. And because it's titanium and it's very rigid, you can't really over-tighten it per se. You could to, to the point of stripping the pivot screw, but it just makes it really easy. You just take it out and, you know, oil it, take it apart, put it back together, and then you just tighten this down, wrench it down until it doesn't turn anymore, you know, without, you know, obviously stripping it or anything. And that's what this action right here is from. This is no type of adjusting or anything like that. This is just wrenching it down and calling it a day. And that was one of the things on this knife that really excited me. The action on this knife, the action was good out of the box. It wasn't perfect. Like I said, it had just the slightest bit of greediness to it. Nothing bad though, it still worked just fine. But especially since I've cleaned it and added the knife pivot lube to it, the action on this knife is great. Now, granted, this is still a heavy knife. This is a nine and a half ounce knife, and the blade is, you know, probably a little more than half of that. You know, you still have to contend with that. It's never going to be lightning fast just because of the weight of the blade. But man, this knife is smooth. I'm going to try to hold it up maybe to where you can see it. See that? It is just completely drop shut. And if I get it right here, maybe you'll see it catch. Right there, that little pop. <clears throat> That's where the detent ball engages. But from that point, if I just get it right past that, it just drops. It is a completely, and of course, it's a heavy blade and that very much contributes to that. But it is just a completely drop shut. I mean, no, no effort required. And it's got a fairly good detent. Uh, this knife, I don't see this knife opening up in your pocket by accident or anything. Uh, but it is just a very, very good action. I mean, all day, I, I could sit here and just do this all day. Now, I know a drop shut action is slightly overblown, you know, nowadays. And I agree, that's not, you know, some big deal. If my knife's not drop shut, that is perfectly fine. Most of my knives aren't drop shut. But... If I can get a knife that is drop shut, I will take it. Uh, I just really like that smoothness. Uh, it's just something about it. And this knife, honestly, almost as much as any other knife I have, 
this is one of the best ones as far as the action on it. I mean, the action on this knife is just, it's, it's really good. Uh, like I said, you can, it doesn't have a super strong detent. The detent isn't just like overwhelming. So you can, if I make it a point to intentionally try to short stroke this, I can get it to not deploy. But like I said, I really have to focus on not doing it hard enough. But any normal, I mean, it, it's zero effort to deploy this knife at all. Uh, it's just a really good action. And I think I skipped over this at the beginning of the video. All this, and that's the reason I like this knife so much, it's got a really good action. Uh, it's got really good materials. The build quality is excellent. You're talking, I mean, do you see how how thick this knife is? This is all titanium. I mean, this is just solid titanium all the way around. And then this giant four inch long slab of D2 steel. And Ethan Grow does a good job with their D. This isn't garbage G D2. I mean, Ethan Grow does a really good job with their D2. Uh, all this for $70. Uh, that's how much I paid for this knife. I ordered this one off Amazon. Uh, that's sort of where you're, you're going to be going to get Ethan Grow knives. Uh, you can get them other places. But as far as just having a good selection of them, Amazon is kind of their go-to distributor. Uh, that's where they sell most of their knives at. And so that's where I got this one. Uh, and this is sort of, I don't, I don't have them written down and I don't know them all off the top of my head, but this is sort of one in a family line. Uh, the Ethan Grow EF9 series, uh, there are multiple knives like this in that series. Like I said, this is the 906. They have a 903, 904, 905. I think a 907, 8, and 9, and they are all similar to this knife. They're all large knives, titanium frame lock, big blades, big handles. They're all that same style, and they all cost the same thing. They're all $69.99 on Amazon. And I know, again, some people will say, well, yeah, but you're still paying $70 for a Chinese-made knife. Well, yeah, you are, but it's 2021. I mean, look, just in the last two or three years, look at some of the knives that are coming out of China. I mean, me as much as anybody else, I'm all for supporting American business and supporting an American company if I can and if it makes sense to but you can't deny, you know, this isn't 1970. You can't just say, well, it's made in China. It's junk. China, some of these Chinese knife companies are putting out a very, very solid product. I mean, some of these Chinese made knives are some of the better knives I've ever had. And I'll just show you, because I mentioned in the start of the video, this isn't the only Ethan Grove knife I have. Uh, I also have this one. Uh, this one isn't a special model in any way, shape, or form. This is just a G10 stainless steel uh, liner lock flipper. It is a fairly large blade. I won't say this one is a four inch blade as well, albeit it's a lot smaller profile of a knife. And I actually got this knife. I didn't buy this knife. I've had this knife for years. Uh, as you can see right there on the blade, this one is D2 as well. Uh, this knife was actually given to me as a groomsman's gift uh, back when one of my buddies got married. Lord, probably five years ago now. Uh, he got all of the groomsmen one of these knives. He got all of us the same knife. He got him one as well. Uh, but he each got us, each of us one of these. And I looked after he got these for us. And I want to say on Amazon, this knife was like, $30 or something like that. And like I said, that's been three, four, maybe five years ago. I've still got this knife and this knife is still solid. I mean, there's no blade play up, down, side to side. It's still sharp. It still takes a good edge. Like I said, Ethan Grow does a good do good job with their D2. It's a good D2. It holds an edge good. Uh, the only thing on this knife, well, I stripped out 
it's either this bottom or this top screw. I strip one of those pocket clip screws out, so it's got a little wiggle in it now. But I've been using this knife for five years. I mean, I've beat on this knife pretty good. I mean, hell, it's got, it's got paint on it right there from something. I mean, I've used this knife, and it's a good knife. And like I said, this was $30, and I've been using it for five years. So, you know, I can't really say anything negative about even gross quality. Uh, get that one out of the way and get back to this one. And this one just takes that to the next level. Uh, you know, some, a lot of companies, there is sort of a point of diminishing return where you can spend more money, but you're not really getting anything more than you would have otherwise. I mean, this, this knife, this even grow right here is double the price of this one. But in my opinion, this knife is double the knife that this one is. Not only in materials, but the way it feels. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this knife. I've carried this knife for years, and I've used the hell out of it. And it's solid, and it, feel, it feels great. You know, it's a solidly built quality knife. But just the feel in hand, I mean, this feels like a, like a pushing a semi-custom knife. I mean, everything about it is good. I mean, I haven't... Again, I've only had this knife for a week, and it's not like I've been, you know, delimbing trees with it, you know, or splitting firewood. But, I mean, just from a normal pocket knife use point of perspective, carrying this, opening boxes, you know, cutting food, you know, whatever, picking splinters out. I mean, this is a great knife. I mean, quality-wise, there's nothing bad I can say about it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's really good. And I mean, the handle, uh, I wasn't sure when I looked at it. Like I said, I was debating on this one or one of the other ones in this model line. Because like I said, they're all the same price. I ended up going with this one. The other one was a little too over the top for me. I wasn't too sure about this handle style. Uh, just looking at it, it doesn't look that ergonomic. But it works just fine. Uh, your hand does kind of sit weird because, like I said, my front finger's in here and my middle finger tries to sit down in this, you know, recess spot right here, but kind of ends up riding this hump. But it's not uncomfortable. Uh, there's nothing uncomfortable about it. All the corners on this knife are rounded beautifully, uh, melded. There's no hot spots on this knife. There's no, even the clip. I mean, all the corners on the clip are nice and rounded off. The only sharp spot on this knife is right here. You can see where the cutout is for the lock bar. It's got a little bit of an edge. I mean, it's not sharp. I can run my finger up and down that all day. It's not going to cut you. But it's just not, you know, rolled and melted off like the rest of the knife is. But, I mean, that's the only spot. And, and who's that going to bother anyway? I mean, I'm holding the knife like this. I don't even feel that while I'm using the knife, you know. Overall, I mean, the ergonomics are great. And again, I've got extra large hands. This is plenty of knife. I mean, you can see I could fit probably another pinky finger on this knife. There's plenty of room. Uh, the jimping is decent. Uh, it's, it's really deep. It's not really sharp, but you can get some traction off that. And like I said, just holding this knife, you can get a full grip. The jimping goes out far enough on the blade which is a pet peeve of mine. I hate it when knife makers design a knife and the jimping only comes out onto the blade like this far. But when I hold the knife, my thumb, I can get my thumb all the way out here, but the jimping stops right here. It doesn't do any good because I'm not, I'm not holding my knife like this all the time. Sometimes I want to just lay my thumb down. This knife helps there. I mean, the jimping comes plenty far enough out for my thumb to get on it. Uh, it's sort of got a, the the blade shape on this knife sort of reminds me of the uh, Spider Co Manix 2. Uh, it's got, or well, the Manix 2, just cause that's kind of one of my go-to Spider Co's, but just Spider Co in general. I mean, not including the, you know, not including the flipper tab. But, I mean, from here forward, that real leaf shaped blade. Uh, it's a very, very utilitarian blade, very useful blade. Uh, Again, four inch blade, I mean, it's probably three and three quarters inches of cutting edge. 
but this knife has a lot of belly uh, and it's actually not that thick behind the edge. For this to be, you know, this thick slab of D2, it really does have a very good taper and it's not that thick behind the edge. Uh, I've had knives that I've felt them out of the box and I was like, Lord, I'm only gonna be able to sharpen this knife 20 times and then the material is gonna be so thick I'm never gonna be able to get an edge on it. This isn't like that. Uh, it's decently thin behind, it's not thin behind the edge. You know, don't get me wrong. It's not, you know, it's not a spider co, but it's decently thin behind the edge. And out of the box, this knife is razor sharp. I haven't touched this blade up since I've got it. Uh, a lot of the time, you know, I'll roll with factory edge, but I'm not too big of a stickler on factory edges. But, you know, if one of them needs touched up out of the box, I'll touch it up. This didn't require that. I mean, this was plenty sharp straight out of the box. Didn't have an issue with it. Uh, just a really nice knife. I mean, the handle's ergonomic. The blade, it's got a very utilitarian, very useful blade shape. Uh, it actually comes down to a decently thin tip. It's not just a super fat tip. Uh, you know, it's not, I'm not going to be worried about breaking this tip. It's not that thin, you know, it's not like a PM2 or something where I'm constantly paranoid. I'm going to break the tip off of it, but it's a decently thin tip, especially for the size of blade and the blade stock that this knife has. Overall, it's just a really nice knife. And like I said, for seventy dollars, I mean, if this if this knife was made by an American company, you know, Medford comes to mind. I mean, because they're they're one of those shops that use D two for everything, even though everybody you know gives them hell about it. But I mean, you know, if Medford were to make this knife, it would be a nine hundred dollar knife. You know, for an American company to produce a knife. With this good of quality, with this good of action, with this giant slab of D2 and five ounces of titanium, you know, with the milling and everything else, I mean, this would be a eight, seven, eight, nine hundred dollar knife if it was made by an American company. But it's not. It's made by Ethan Grow in China, and it's seventy dollars. And in my opinion, it gives you know knives like Medford and all that a run for their money. Now, I mean, I know I'll get some grief for that comment, say, you know, nothing's better than a Medford, nothing's better than a Hinder. And I, I get that. I like those knives. I've I've had a Medford Praetorian. It's a great knife. I'm just saying, is it really $800 better than this knife? I say no. I mean, this is a hell of a knife for $70. It's high quality. The action's awesome. I mean, the blade shape is perfect. The ergonomics are good the materials used are you know high quality the attention to details there it's just a really good knife it's just a really good overall knife uh and that's really all i can say about it and in case you're wondering the blade finish i'm not 100 percent sure what it is and amazon doesn't list it because there's no shine to it at all what it looks like to me it looks like it was a bead blasted finish that was then stonewashed. It looks like somebody stonewashed over the top of a beat blast finish. That's the only way I know how to describe it, just in case any of you were wondering. Uh, I'll throw a few size comparisons up here for you real quick. Uh, here is the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. I'll line them up from the butt. Uh, as you can see, the Ethan Grove is probably about an inch longer overall than the Spyderco PM2. Uh, here's a more common EDC knife. Here's a full-size Benchmade bug out. Uh, as you can see, this is a much larger knife. It's probably two, two and a half inches longer overall than the Benchmade bug out. And just because I know somebody will ask me how it compares in size, I went ahead and brought it. Well, let me put this one down here on bottom. Here's the Cold Steel Recon, or Recon 1, the Cold Steel 4MAX Scout. Uh, if you line them up butt to butt, the 4MAX is still larger. The 4MAX is, the 4MAX is a giant knife. The 4MAX is the epitome of what Cold Steel embodies and what they portray in some of their videos. Uh, the 4MAX overall is probably three quarters of an inch 
to maybe a little under an inch longer than the Ethan Grow. But to me, these knives both fall into the same category. Not, you know, as far as size. As far as size, I just consider both of these, they're big knives. They're not gonna be great for carry, but they're cool, you know. In that regard, both of these knives kind of fill the same, the same role for me. <clears throat> but, I just kind of wanted to take a minute to show y'all guys this knife. And I know I've harped in this video and I know somebody is going to give me grief because the last couple knives I've, I've shown have been Chinese made knives and I've just kind of raved about them. But I mean, if somebody's doing good work, somebody's doing good work. I mean, you can't, you can't discount and call something worse just because of where it's from. I mean, you know, you can't do that. And I'm not just this big, I love everything from China guy. I mean, for the most part, I'm an, um, if at any point I can support American business and it makes logical and financial sense to do so, I'll support American business every time. I mean, well, hell, just because, just because my desk is sitting right beside where I can, I mean, hell, all my work boots are sitting right here beside me. I mean, if these let go in frame, these are my... Chippewa lager boots. They're American made. Uh, here are some of my third goods. You know, just plain old work boot, American made. Uh, here are my cowboy boots. These are Anderson Bean, American made. Here's another newer pair that I haven't worn yet. These are Carolinas. These are American made. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not just this big, you know, buy everything Chinese because it's cheaper. If it makes sense to buy American, I will. But when it comes to knives, especially here lately, you can just get so much knife for your money with some of these Chinese companies that it just hasn't made sense, you know, for some of the American knives. Now, yeah. If there's a certain American made knife you want, you know, if you're a hinderer guy, obviously you have to buy American, you know. But if you're just looking for a general purpose knife or just kind of a cool knife, for, you know, just to add to the collection to carry, I mean, some of these Chinese companies are knocking it out of the park. And, you know, I think, I think Americans overall quality is still better, yes. But it's just at the price point some of these American companies' knives come in at, it's just sometimes it's hard to justify for some people. So that's why I like showing and reviewing some of these Chinese-made knives. I just think you really get a lot of bang for your buck, and they're just really good knives. I mean, the action, again, the action on this knife is just wonderful. I, I love it. It's so good. Uh, but anyway, guys, I think this is the longest video I will have posted, like, ever. So I'm going to go ahead and write this one off. Uh, until next time, guys, if y'all got any questions on this knife or any other knives, you know, anything you think I might could help you out with, feel free to drop it down, drop a, you know, comment down below. Uh, and remember, if you guys like this video, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, it really helps out the channel. Turn on that notification bell. Uh, it's been it's been slow this week, and I apologize for that. That's why I'm trying to knock out a few videos in the next couple of days. Uh, but normally, I try to post one to two times a week, uh, depending on my work schedule. So again, if you like the channel, if you like the video, you like the content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, guys, y'all be safe. Take it easy. We'll see y'all next time.